What's good YouTube, it's your boy King Kobe and we back with another video. In today's video, we will talk about the pros and cons of paying college athletes. We will be touching both sides of the argument. Without further ado, let's get into the video. On July 1st, 2021, the NCAA amended its rules to make it possible for college athletes to earn money through their names, images, and likeness. Before starting this video, make sure y'all leave a like, subscribe, comment, and go check out the rest of the videos on the channel. All right, so starting off, we all pretty much aware that student athletes have been fighting for decades to get this right passed by the NCAA. Um, we've heard a lot of professional athletes speak on the issue. Student athletes can now sell their name, image, and likeness, and it's all called the NIL policy. Before 2021, athletes could not monetize their brand, and student athletes did not have the right to earn anything through the benefit of their game. According to the NIL deal, a player can sign sponsorship deals with corporate brands, charge money for autographs now, and you can even create your own brand or e-commerce store, which was not possible before. As with anything, there are always some advantages and disadvantages for the student athlete, and that is what we will be discussing today. If we wanna start off with some pros, number one, it's gonna help athletes complete a full education. If a student is financially struggling, but is a good enough athlete, they can now continue their education and support their family at the same time. When athletes get compensated through endorsements, they usually will not have to worry about obtaining a job outside of school, and they can focus on their respective sport. This is a big deal because as athletes, we're usually tied up between a couple things at a time. And in order to be good at your sport and be good at school at the same time, they both require a large amount of sacrifice and investment. And if you're struggling financially, sometimes you're not able to do this. Number two is gonna provide relief for families. As mentioned in a previous point regarding education, the most significant advantage of this is that financially weak students will not have to work any part-time job. And in this way, they can still support themselves or their families without financial assistance. Athletes dedicate over 40 plus hours a week to their respective sport while in college. You add on 20 plus more hours a week for classes and studying, and at least athletes will almost no time for extracurricular duties such as getting a part-time job or joining a club. As a result of this, families are constantly put into a position to provide continued funding for student athletes since a lot of athletes cannot work jobs. Paying the athlete means offering a specific amount of financial relief to the families which could not afford funds to continue long-term support of their student athletes. Number three, it will reduce corruption in college athletes and coaches. The compensation of college athletes may limit corruption involving agents, boosters, and other parties. Over the past decade or two, there has been a countless number of financial scandals and scenarios in college athletic programs that have cost players and coaches their careers. By offering another path or incentive to make money, players and coaches can now avoid these major scandals and keep their dignity and reputation intact. So now that we have discussed a couple of pros and benefits, we're gonna move on to the cons and some of the disadvantages that I believe the NIL policy brings upon colleges and college athletes. Number one, academics can be ignored. The most significant disadvantage of this is that it will affect the education of the students because when you start earning a lot of money at a young age, we see this all the time with basketball, but now that it's kind of just broad, we can see this with a lot of different mainstream sports now. When you start earning a lot of money at a young age, you usually don't have to worry too much about your education because the whole point of us going to college and getting this education is to get a job that will earn us money. If athletes are finding ways to earn this money before they complete their education, that leaves them pretty much with no purpose to continue pursuing the education. And this could cause like a slight loss of motivation. Number two, unpopular sports can and will be ignored. By paying athletes, there is a fear that less famous and unprofitable sports will disappear entirely because no one will pay attention to them. It will only destroy smaller sports, but it also could affect women's competition because as we know in every country, on average, the competition of men athletes gets more viewership. This will cause everybody to rush towards more mainstream sports and in this way, smaller niche sports will ultimately be ignored and forgotten as well. Sports such as gymnastics, swimming, 
thousand volleyball games. This can be bad because we don't want to have some athletes feeling left out of the benefits that this deal brings. With viewership, that's what companies are going to focus on. The more eyes a sport is bringing in, the more dollar signs a company sees, and that's just really that simple. Number three, every athlete will not benefit from this deal. So while the NIO policy will encourage more high school athletes to take their sport more seriously in hopes of earning money in college, not every athlete will be chosen for endorsement deals. Unless you are one of the top athletes on your team or you have some type of marketing presence, most likely you won't be able to enjoy the benefits of a sponsorship. This could also be viewed as a positive since it will drive competition overall. You know, everybody will be competing to get to the dollar sign. So that should raise the level of play across the board. But for the athletes that don't earn endorsements, there could be all types of emotions and feelings that arise, which could end up being toxic for the team environment and the program as a whole. With all that being said, that brings us to our conclusion. There are both concerns and pros that come with the NIO policy. But if student athletes are well guided and they can understand how to use this policy in their advantage and as a side of leverage. Let us know how you feel about this topic by leaving a comment down below. And if you have any other pros or concerns that you think we forgot, make sure you tell us in the comment section. Thank you for your time. Make sure y'all subscribe, leave a like, share the video. We got a lot of more videos coming for y'all. Let's get it.